It's one of the most watched events in the world, broadcast live this year for the first time in the United States. It's gotten so big, even Justin Timberlake took to the stage. Australian hopes were sky high after a brilliant grand final performance by Dami Yim. Russia was the hot favourite among 26 finalists. Europe starts voting now! But Eurovision is always full of surprises and this year was no different, delivering a tension-filled climax. Our 12 points go to... Australia! Australia! Dami's sound of silence won the jury vote convincingly, but in a nail-biting finish, the popular vote saw our margin shrink. It's Ukraine! Landing a shock victory just ahead of Australia for Ukraine's Jamala. And her stirring song about Stalin's forced deportations of Crimean Tatars in 1944. If you sing, if you talk about truth, it really can touch people. Mobbed after an exhausting wait for the votes to be counted, Dami was overcome with emotion. I'm just so happy and, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Um, you know, I, I hope Australia is proud of me. I'm, I'm so grateful for all the support. And... <sighs> Saying Eurovision has been the best and most exhausting experience of her life. I wanted to win it for Australia, but then, you know, Ukraine did really well and I, I just thought, you know, second place, I, I knew I would be proud and satisfied. Dami M had planned on spending the next six months touring regional Australia. Now she is an international superstar in her own right. And this stage is just the beginning. Eurovision's finished, but it's not the end for me. I think it's only begun to, you know, I want to keep making Australia proud with my music. And she says Australia has well and truly earned its place in the contest. A hope shared by thousands of Eurovision fans who sent their votes down under. What a journey. Well, Brett Mason joins us live now. Brett, could Dami ever find a stage bigger than this? Well, Sarah, it's hard to imagine, isn't it? More than 200 million people tuned in across the world, including in the United States and China. A couple of hundred of those viewers were just south of Brisbane, where Dami Im attended primary school. At Dami Im's former school, delight at the rise of their hometown girl, an Australian born in Korea, who almost snatched Eurovision's crown. She came from a little tiny uh, school in Logan and all of a sudden she's up on a stage in front of 200 million people. Dami's elevation to the world stage was kick-started by her 2013 X Factor win. She'd moved here aged nine and began learning English by listening to the Spice Girls. Now it's her that's got the world talking in the most tweeted Eurovision in history. When Dami Im was performing, she got a massive 46,000 tweets per minute. When Ukraine were performing, they got less, 38,000 tweets per minute. I think I'm more interested now that Australia is competing and I think we did extremely well coming in second place. Well, we all expect to come in first. Her second place, not making her any less a winner in the Prime Minister's eyes. Malcolm Turnbull tweeting, congrats Dami on winning the jury vote in the Eurovision final and to Jamala for winning the contest. From his rival Bill Shorten, you've done Australia proud, making Australia proud but not scaring off Europe just yet. It's for everyone. No one cares who you come from, if you're good. It was on stage at the Sydney Opera House that Dami Im was declared Australia's Eurovision contestant. But even if she had claimed victory early this morning, Australia wouldn't have won hosting rights for next year. While centre stage isn't likely to relocate down under, the contest could soon be on this side of the world in another form. One of the things that SBS has now done to take the competition to a whole new level is take the rights for the Eurovision to be able to have the option to grow 
a competition in Asia. Eurovision's latest reinvention is slated for next year. Helen Espista, SBS World News. Odami well, celebrated her second place finish at Eurovision with a large glass of lemonade joined by her husband Noah and her extremely proud parents who've travelled here to watch her performance. She's enjoying a sleep in here in Stockholm this morning before spending a bit of time in Europe meeting some of her new fans and doing a tad of songwriting. And as you can probably hear behind me, the enormous Eurovision Roadshow is being packed up for another year as preparations are already underway for Eurovision 2017 in Kiev. Sarah? Thanks very much, Brett. We're getting closer every year. Thanks for joining us live there.